In this video, we are going to look at the concept of vector in physics. We look at unit vectors in either two or three dimension. Alright, so let's begin with the basic definition of vector in physics. So, vector is simply a quantity that has both magnitude and duration. Alright, for instance, velocity is a vector quantity. So, a body can have a magnitude of 20 meters per second in a particular direction maybe east west north or south as the case may be all right so we also have impulse impulse is a vector quantity we also have acceleration we have momentum we have work with work done we have also weight yes weight is the vector quantity and we have our field forces that's the electrical force the magnetic force and gravitational force. So these are examples of field forces. They are all vector quantities in physics. All right, so they have magnitude and direction. Now, whereas other quantities are those that don't have direction but they have only magnitude. All right. So example of fundamental quantities are scalar quantity. Example, we have mass time. We have our length. Our electric current temperature even energy here is a scalar quantity we also have power power is a scalar quantity and the rest of them so be sure to know how to differentiate a vector quantity from a scalar quantity all right so let's write this now look at unit vectors in two or three dimension all right, so let's look at this question. It says if vector p causes value and vector q causes value, find i the magnitude of vector p and q, i i the scalar product of p and q, and i i i the cosine of angle between p and q. Okay, so the magnitude of the vector should be this how we present it, and see we are finding the absolute value of a number or uh, of a function. So it will be the magnitude of p equals square roots of the square of the ijk value so it's going to be the magnitude of vector p would be square root of 7 square right plus back minus 3 square right plus 2 square right okay so let's put everything in brackets right so when you simplify this you're going to have square root of okay 7 square will give us 49 all right minus 3 square will give us 9 plus 9 all right 2 square will give us 4 so when it's going to be 5 we're going to have square root of 62 so when you break this down square root of 62 will give us then punch it here then give us 7 point 8 7 all right so let's leave it in two decimal places so this will be the magnitude of this vector p so let's write this now so for the magnitude of vector q okay so the magnitude of vector q the q will be so square root of we have four put the bracket square right plus five square right plus in bracket minus three square so if you simplify you're going to have square root of 4 square is 60 plus 5 square is 25 all right plus minus 9 and of 3 square order is 9 all right so when you simplify, you're going to have square root of 50 so if we break this down it's going to give us 7.07 all right so this will be the magnitude of vector q so it's as simple as that guys now let's write this and stuff for the scalar products okay so the scalar products will be the sum of the product of the similar vectors so that's the dot product of between p and q will be we have seven times p4 plus minus three times five so we put it in back because of this negative three all right plus two times minus 3 leaving back because of the negative truth. so we simplify going to have 7 times 4 we have 28 minus 3 times 
5 will give us minus 15 minus so minus 15 times this will give us minus 15 still minus 15 all right then 2 times negative 2 will give us minus 6 minus 6 times this plus here still give us minus 6 so when you simplify further we are going to get 7 as the answer so this will be the scalar product of these vectors p and q all right so let's why did I solve the last question, which is the cosine of the angle between P and Q? Alright, so the cosine of the angle between vector P and Q will be cos theta equals the scalar product that is dot product between P and Q over the magnitude of vector P the, and times the magnitude of vector Q. Alright, so this is Q. So remember the magnitude of vector when we did it, we got it to be 7.87. That of vector Q, we got it to be 7.07. .07. Alright, so when we substitute the values, they're going to have cos theta because the scalar product is 7 over 7.87 .87 times 7.07. .07. So when simplified, this you simplify this, then point my calculator is going to give me so I have it to be 0 0.125. People are leaving it in three decimal places. Alright. So we have remember we have cos theta equals the 0 0.125. So to make theta the starting formula, divide both sides by cos. So this kind of for theta will be cos inverse of 0. 0.125. Alright, so well, let me point it my calculator. Okay, so cost inverse of 0 0.125 will give us 82.81 if we are leaving it in two decimal places. And this will be the cosine of the angle between vector P and Q. So, guys, this is basically the concept behind unit vector in. Or, or three dimension this one we use for example is vectors in three dimensions all right so the same approach is applied to anyone they want that involves two dimensional vector and other so with this we are come to the end of the class hope you have something interesting if you are new to the channel sure to subscribe for more videos so like share and comment on this video tell me how you feel in other words you have learned if you seem to have any specific questions i'll feel free to be a question in the comment section below now be sure to give your response that's for this class guys thanks for watching